Hey. Welcome to the Culture Couch. <laughs> wiki, wiki, what's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the Culture Couch. What couch are we sitting, <laughs> what couch are we sitting on today, Goofin? <laughs> we are still on the same couch. <laughs> From article of <laughs> an awesome love scene. <laughs> Uh, Heather Gray, of course. Are we are we any closer to getting that sponsorship deal with Crate and Barrel? <laughs> Have you reached out to their their CEO? It's, it's not about us. It's about you guys, the listeners, and um, whether you want it enough to make it happen. So yeah. smash the like. Let's start a petition for the Culture Couch show to receive funding and sponsorship from Crate and Barrel. Right. So that, you know, if you're new to the show, the the future, the trajectory of this program is that Crate and Barrel is going to send us a new couch every week for the program. Yep. And we are going to sit on it and we're going to review the couch, plug Crate and Barrel. That's the sponsorship. And then we're going to give the couch away to a family in need. It's, What's wrong with that? It is a foolproof plan yeah um are we stuck on crate and barrel or is it just like we'll take anything i mean article would be cool yep we already have an article couch we have two article couches in the spes oh the bus yeah and you can't go to boutique because small boutique furniture companies only have so many options and it has to make sense for like like the family we give it to it has to be like a family couch you know we can't be out here sounds like we're about to get sponsored by lazy boy anyways welcome to the culture couch where we talk about what makes valor valor we talk about company culture um and ultimately we're just talking about our experience here as young business daddies uh soon to be well in this analogy oh, valor is our kid i'm sorry um and i just generally identify as a, as a daddy uh but cool. anyways Talking about our experience, hopefully you can glean something, be inspired in some way. Um, today, we're talking about this little acronym we made up. Uh, Straight from the NOG. Yeah. I think uh, really the backstory behind this acronym, which is undisclosed at this point, is things would go wrong behind the bar, right? Yep. And things always go wrong. One of our service philosophies that we say in orientation is don't panic. We don't panic, um, which th there's that's not a very like inspiring thing to say to someone like don't panic. But I think that there is just a simplicity to be like, hey, we don't panic. It's fine. Right. Yeah. And there's certain things that you can foresee that could induce panic. So something that we talk about is a rush is it's a normal thing at Valor. Right. We are accustomed to there being a line for a good chunk of the day. We want to get through that as efficiently and funnily as possible. Yeah. And panic has no place in that. Right. Um, but it's one thing just to say something, you know, don't panic or hey, yes. we don't panic. It's another thing to provide mm, tools. Do you mind if I put my arm here? Not at all. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the 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 tool that we have implemented, um, I'm not sure how many people behind the bar actually draw from this on the daily, but um, whenever we do like our our point training, point is like our manager on duty uh, position. Mm -hmm. We have this acronym. It's DIAL D I A L, and it's it's an acronym for you to go through whenever things start to get out of hand doesn't even have to be behind the bar. It could be, you know, in the packaging station. It could be at home, at home when you're on your laptop and you have a thousand emails. Um, but it's first first step, D, don't panic. Just breathe. Re -emphasize. Breathe. Breathe. It's okay. You can't, you can't assess a problem without – you can't assess a problem while you're just unstable and panicked, right? Right. We'll, we'll come back to everything. I – identify the problem we can't solve a problem 
we can't eliminate panic without knowing why we're panicking or why something's going wrong. Identify the problem as I. A, act. Based off of what you know from your experience and from our values, act and solve the problem that you just identified. And the last thing is learn for the L. Learn from the mistake. Let's eliminate this in the future. Um, let's grow together and move forwards. Um, can you think of any times mm. in your professional career at Valor mm. that you've had to implement this acronym? We have a, a world famous story around this, but let me just get real for a second. Get real. Last Saturday, it was super busy. Yeah. And the weather's cooling. We got a lot of hot drinks, a lot of signature drinks. Yep. So we're making a lot of hot, more intricate beverages. And those puppies just take longer to make. They're more labor intensive. Yes. And like the latte art piece. Oh, like and I'm a latte artist, so. You are an artist. Um, you know, it's it's you have to pay more attention to detail of like how you pour the latte art in a hot drink versus an ice drink. You just pour it over the ice and send it. Yeah, or get it from the keg. Right. Just boom. Yeah. Ready to rock. But with hot drinks, you're pretty much doing it all besides drip. But you're saying Saturday. Saturday, super busy. And I start to I start to feel panic. There's just this, this concept of pacing that I'm sure every business or cafe has to a certain extent but we're always trying to monitor what's the intake and the outtake of the the team you know are we sending in drinks at a steady pace so that they can come out and not be like 20 minute tickets right because if the person taking the orders takes orders too fast then it's great because we know what everybody wants in the line and the line is moving faster but then you have a different problem which is you have a ton of people waiting for their drink. Right. And then the production team gets backed up. So it's like, okay, we have to balance the speed of both of those things. So, yeah, I I was making drinks, and it was just like like more people were on that waiting side. Tickets, we have like a color-coded thing. Tickets were getting red. Everybody knows red means bad. Yep. And, you know, what we're saying with Dial don't panic, identify the problem, act and learn. That's all very basic, but it's so helpful to have in the back of your head when panic does come on because it makes everything blurry. So I had, we have a bunch of people on staff on the Saturday. So there's like two support positions and they're both just like, Hey, what can we do to help? And part of me is in a little bit of panic. I was like, look at all the orders. I'm like, Oh, in part, there's one part of me that is just like survival, which is like, all right, I'll just stick my head down and I'll just keep rocking it through. That is the slower, more inefficient, but easier route. But I had to do something which was step away and say, okay, let me just take a breath, look at this, and how can I activate the team around me so that we can get through this better? Mm-hmm. Short term, I'm not making drinks for 30 seconds, but we're going to make drinks better for the next 30 minutes because right. I'm activating people. Um, so that was just a good quick example of like, and then, so identify the problem of like, all right, we have a lot of hot drinks coming in. So I need to have someone else steaming milk on the other side. And I need to have someone to my right side, helping me finish the signature drinks, peeling the oranges, garnishing, blah, blah, blah. And so I was able to activate those people accordingly. And then, um, learning from that and being, all right, Hey, this is a good thing to note for this fall rush is that, you know, instead of having a support person just on kegs the whole time, that's not really valuable in this situation. I need need them more by my side helping finishing out drinks. Uh, And I learned, and I communicated that. So that's a really easy, applicable answer to this week. There's a whole other story. I'm sure we've said it on the other programs around last or like a couple of Februarys ago it was snowing and our espresso machine broke and we we're in the middle of a Saturday rush and it was like oh my gosh the story is extra memorable because it was snowing it was <laughs> it snowing. doesn't snow that it much doesn't here. snow that much in Georgia I'm sure if you're listening to this and you're somewhere else you're like and you said it was snowing because right but it was snowing all right it was a big deal um and yeah it espresso machine broke 
there's probably 12 tickets in line, 15 other people in line. You got five people working behind the bar, and it's like, all right, what do you do? Dial. Don't panic. Step away. Like, what's going on? The eye's pretty easy. Identify the problem. Espresso machine, no worky. Need- but all the implications of that. Right. Identifying those problems is maybe not as easy if you're in a panic state. Absolutely. Um, and acting was, I think, of especially in the role that I was in for both these stories, I was trying to activate my team. So I said, all right, hey, you, you person, uh, take all these free drink cards and go give them out to everybody that just ordered and say, you're not going to get what you want. What can we get you? We have cold brew or like iced coffee and hot coffee. Right. That's what we can, or tea. Anything that is not made by the espresso machine, we can still do. Right. And then the next person be like, all right, give it some time. And then in a few minutes, start taking orders and say that you can offer those same things. This person, hey, make sure we don't run out of hot coffee or iced coffee because we still right. have to brew it. And then the next person, hey, go grab the single group espresso machine that we have in the back that was used for the cart and start setting it up. And then I told myself, try to fix the espresso machine. But in the whole like short term easy way, if that situation just came upon, I could have just stopped communicating to my team and started trying to fix the espresso machine. Right. And I would have thrown things all out of whack for way too long. I can just remember so I this is such a familiar feeling for me where something is going really wrong and my boss at the time is trying to silently and ang- and like angrily fixing it. And I'm over here like, I can tell something's wrong. I don't think there's anything I can do. And if I ask what I can do, I'm afraid I'm going to make it worse. <laughs> You'll feel their wrath. Right. So uh, being being a leader in that situation looks like, sometimes it looks like just fixing it and just taking the brunt of it, maybe depending on how serious the situation is and depending on your ability to fix it. But I think what real leadership looks like there is involving the team in the issue as much as it's helpful to do that Mm -hmm. and activating them in solving the problem together. Yeah. And the other downside of panic in those situations is you can, what you kind of hinted to is you can lash out at people that are innocent bystanders. Um, So the invitation into the process helps the people who are maybe a little less, emotionally attached to the problem can better communicate to the people around what's going on. Yeah. And going back to the reason we came up with this acronym is like I mentioned before, we were bringing on uh, points managers on duty and we were trying to figure out, okay, these people, their whole point of their job is we want them to act like we would act if we were in their shoes. Um, better way to say that is like we want them to be aligned with our values in their own unique way but essentially like if something goes wrong we want them to solve it as if we were were there mm. and so um cuz yeah i mean i remember when we first were talking about this like this was like some of the first times where we were not in the cafe and we were entrusting somebody else that had a lot less experience than us mm-hmm to manage our cafe and that was scary and so um yeah especially when things go wrong things used to go wrong a lot more often you you, have you realized this yeah yeah (laughs) because we've we've just dialed in our systems more we've upgraded our equipment our fridges don't break as much we have figured out ways to like sweet talk our espresso machine into working a little bit more Mm-hmm. Our grinders, we have a better cleaning regimen for. Um, and people just generally have taken more responsibility in the last year just by product of them being here longer. And mm-hmm. um, I think of back when we first started in the cart days where you are transporting thousands of dollars of espresso equipment down a highway Every time you go to an event and your espresso machine is just like blah, 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 in the in the trailer, things are gonna break. Mm-hmm. And you have a line of people to cater, and this is like the bride's big day, you know, and they paid you a lot of money to come and provide an awesome experience. Boy, you better be dialed. 
Yeah. You better be using that don't panic, identify the problem, act and learn because things are going to go wrong. Um, we got we got stories. We got stories. Abounding there. Um, but anyways, just just a little little acronym for for y'all's uh, Monday. I think this comes out on Monday. Um, yeah. I things go wrong in every workplace, and I just we found it so much. We found conquering those problems is a lot easier when using this acronym. The last thing I'll say that we we've realized about this is instead of letting panic master you and becoming a victim of panic behind the bar, use panic and emotions too. like use your emotions and use panic as a tool, like a, a call signal, a signpost towards something that needs attention. Right. So behind an example of that is it, behind the bar is an easy example to use. If you start to feel panic, be like, okay, again, try not to panic for a second. Identify the problem. Why am I feeling this? Chances are you are feeling panic behind the bar or in your workplace because you are not trained to handle what you're trying to handle. Or maybe the employee next to you, your peer, is not pulling their weight and they need to be encouraged or they need some correction or they need you know to move to a different position um use that panic not as don't 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 become a victim of the panic but rather notice that panic in yourself which will then manifest a problem it will shed light on a problem that you wouldn't have been able to solve had you not panicked a little bit for a second I've just we've just done that so much like over the years whether that's behind the bar or here there's a tension point there's something that's going wrong we start to feel a little bit of panic and we have a choice there to either become a victim of that and bring down everyone around us mm -hmm. with our panic or we can notice that panic and be like okay this is an opportunity to grow and fix a problem and eliminate this for not only myself but my teammates in the future. Yeah, it's a, that's an empowering message, my man, that you have the power to find the the root, the stress right. point, and change it and not fall prey to just getting stressed out all the time or getting panicked at work all yes. the time. But especially in our situation, we have such a small company that, like, we can, we can make it happen. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I would say apply that to your to your week, huh? Culture couch, culture couch. We're on the culture couch, culture couch, culture couch. I don't know what rhymes with couch. Slouch. Don't be a slouch. Uh, I don't know. Literally, I don't know what Touch. else. Touch. Oh. Touch, no. Guys, thanks for tuning in. We love you. Love you.